What's up everybody, this is Perfect Tank and today I'm bringing you an update on my African Signet Tank and it has been a little while since I've made a video and I'm very sorry for that but I've been very busy with school um, and things like that so I'm sorry for that but I wanted to give you guys a new African Signet episode because um, I, I thought that it was a very long time since I've made an African Signet video and you know I, I think I would make some of you African Signet people very happy um, because the tank is looking very nice um, and I really just wanted to show you guys some few updates and tell a little bit about some few tips and, and tricks um, about African Secret Tanks. So um, I really want to show you guys these Arosas right, right now because they are just getting huge. Like you can see the, the full size of the tank right here and the size of those Arosas right, they're getting really really big. Um, I think that some of them are already 7 centimeters, so that's rather big. So they, um, they just swim around. And one of them died though, I've never found its corpse, but it died at some point, um, and I don't know how, but it was one of the, the African Signet Fry that was rather small. It has always been small, and it was not really as healthy as the other inhabitants, so, um, you know, it pretty much got killed because, you know, it's, it's just how it works, survival of the fittest, but, um, I've given these guys some, some krill as some uh, some basic food in their diet here in the last couple of days and they really seem to enjoy it like they really like to get some frozen food every now and again I think that it's very important but I try to stay away from blood worms because I don't really think that blood worms are um, very good for Mabuna cichlids uh, you know you can use them for peacocks and hepachromis you know, and, and, uh, but it's it's rather hard because um, with peacocks and, and hares, as I've, I've said many times in the past, you know, they mainly live off of meat, whereas Mabuna mainly lives off of veggies, um, like algae and stuff like that. So that's also why Mabuna will just tear up plants like crazy and the others will not mind them as much. Like peacocks won't really mind uh, plants as much. Um, you can try to do that yourself. You know, I've kept many different plants with my African cichlids, it's always the Mabunas. And these synodontous catfish that are the, the main problem with uh, like digging up the plants or just ruining them, the plants entirely. But, um, you know, I really don't want to, uh, you know, I got a mixed African cichlid tank. I don't got any peacocks at the moment. Um, I've had peacocks in the past. You guys remember my German red peacock um, that passed away here for a couple of months ago. Um, but my my I do have a couple of hypochromis, you know, I got the Venusis and I got the Blue Alley um, You know, um, so it's very important that I don't feed um, Blood worms because I got so many Mabuna in here, you know, I got the Metria Klima, I got the um, the um, you, They're just chasing each other around right now, but um, I got the Arotis, the Arotis male over there I got my my Kenya and the Arotis fry and you know things like that. So it's you know, it's not very, um, it's pretty hard to feed anything with high protein and blood worms has a crazy high protein um, and when these, these foods have these crazy high amounts of protein um, and um, veggie eaters eat it that are not, uh, you know, used to actually um, digesting meat um, and when they get meat with a lot of protein, um, that can cause some pretty bad trouble because there will be a lot of leftover protein in their body and that's just not good because when all this leftover um, protein is in their in their body um, they might actually get internal parasites which is not very good um, and they might also get a disease that is called Malawi bloat where they will get like these um, really bloated stomachs it looks horrible and they will pretty much die of that it's pretty hard to cure but um, I've never had Malawi blow before, of course, because I've only fed with um, a vegetable diet, um, a little bit of, you know, frozen invertebrates um, that are not like worms and things like that, because black worms, blood worms, mosquito larvae, all those um, sort of larvae and worms, they usually have a very high protein, um, so don't feed them that, but try to feed them something like shrimp or krill. I often feed mine... Um, cocktail shrimp they really like cocktail shrimp like you can just um, throw a couple of cocktail shrimp down here and they're just tear it apart like crazy um, but um, you know uh, my friend Sosa actually really seems to like krill um, he, he usually eats some cocktail shrimp when I throw them down here but 
Um, he mostly likes the krill because it's a little bit smaller and he can, uh, you know, better eat it. Um, but you know, that's pretty much all of the things that I can give you about tips and things like that. I have, you can see I got a, a couple of the plants in here that are still here. Um, that was, um, I tried to put in the, uh, you know, the jungle valve, but it just, they just like tore it apart like crazy. So I couldn't really do anything about that, but um, I don't have anywhere else to place it right now. So, you know, it can just stay in here for a little bit of, of cover for the um, sickness and you can see the water is very clear I just did a water change for a couple of days ago so it's looking very nice um, but you know um, there's a few algae growing on the rocks right now which is actually fine with me because you know the, the consumers got a lot of food to eat um, you know the um, the smaller roses fry always um, like grazes on the rocks um, I found out that a rose is not like most other mabunas because they are a lot more open swimmers. They of course stay around the rocks. You can just look at how they swim around right here. Um, it's They always stay around the rocks. That's what Mabuna does. But they are a little bit more out in the open than some other Mabuna species are. Um, which is very unique of course. But um, as you guys know by the way, I'll make some more aquarium science videos in the future. I might actually make one um, this week. So stay tuned for that guys. Um, there's going to be a lot of topics get, getting covered. There's going to be um, zoology and physics and chemistry. Those are the, the three main ones that I'm focusing on right now, but there will be a lot more, so um, stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, you know, all of the fish are doing very, very nicely. Um, you might actually um, see that there's no yellow lab in here, but he actually died. Um, I do not know how he died because, um, you know, I always try to check out if my fish have, has a good health and you know look at their behavior and things like that which is one of the main focus points I'm going to give you guys in aquarium science zoology but what I really want to um, what I really want to say is that he was pretty I think he was just um, a victim of um, aggression because you know my, my Kenya is like a really aggressive bastard you know he always goes around and chase the other fish like he's some like mighty beast I don't know why he does that but He's kind of, he's kind of scary, um, and I actually think that he intimidated him pretty much because of those colors. Um, you know, he, he seems to usually be um, the one that kills the very colorful fish because he doesn't really like other fish that are very colorful. Um, that's also why you might notice that the blue alley is uh, lo looking almost like a blue orchid because it is, has changed color and it, uh, it has really adapted to this tank and this hiraki. So it tries to disguise itself as um, an inhabitant that, wo that won't really do any harm or um, like an inhabitant that won't really try to um, you know, take a spot over the Kenya in the Haraki which is very important because you know um, the Kenya is the alpha male and you have to remember that like um, you will see your fish adapt in pretty amazing ways, they will change color and um, change behavior as well. They will sometimes look like a female and act like a female um, Some different things like that. So um, that is what has happened with the, the blue alley um, And the way you can see it's not a blue orchid is because a blue orchid is a lot more round um, The blue alley is a lot more long um, and as you can see it's very long and very thin Whereas a blue orchid would be more like like this like it would be very round um, the body is very tall um, Almost like the Kenya, um, but that one is very long and slim. Um, but really, what I wanted to show you guys was also that the Melanochromus aurotis. Um, you know, a lot of you guys have been like, "How is that a Melanochromus aurotis?" Um, and I know it's a Melanochromus aurotis because you can see its markings is completely like a Melanochromus aurotis. You know, the um, the black markings on its tail and the end of its um, the end of its fins right here. Um, that is um, a very, you know, normal um, sign that is in an erotis because, it, you, know, you know, they all got that. You can see right here, they got the, the markings on their fins. Um, but what, what really happens typically with um, male erotis is that when they get at, um, to an adult size, they will change color to blue. And this guy is sort of gray. He's not really blue. And the reason he's not blue is because if he was blue, um, the Kenya would take him as, um, as you know, um, a sort of um, another role than he would be if he, you know, if he just looked like this. 
because if he just looks like this, he's not getting uh, he's not getting it intimidated by his colors, and um, he doesn't think that he's one that will try to take over his spot. Um, you know, he he doesn't take him as an aggressor. They are mostly just they will just look at him like he's just a peaceful you know inhabitant um, that they rule over, and that's very important to to understand with um, with Kenya, is especially because a lot of you guys have been asking me like. How have you been able to keep Kenyas um, with so many different cichlids and ha not have them, you know, killed? Um, and believe me, I've had a lot of fish that have died because of my Kenya, but I, I really just love my Kenya. He's my favorite fish in here. So, you know, I, I still keep him in here because, like, he's huge. Like, like, just look at my hand and him. He's pretty gigantic. Now there. Um, and, you know, his colors are just fantastic. Um, and you know, the, that was the problem with the yellow lab. It, the, the yellow lab doesn't really have um, anything with its species where it can change color. It, it can be a little bit more of a dimmer yellow, some are like almost white. Um, and a lot of people think that it's because they're unhealthy. In some cases it, is, it, in some cases it is, but it's also very important to understand that they actually do that from the, uh, like in the wild to make sure that they won't get chased by any of the alpha males in the lake. Um, but you know, um, I think his yellow, co the, the yellow colors of the yellow lab really just intimidated the Kenya pretty much, and he just, um, the Kenya was getting pretty bored, so he decided to kill him. That's what he does. He's like a serial killer. But what's really important for you guys to understand is that, um, you know, I will make um, a lot of aquarium science videos where I will call all of these topics I'm talking about. Um, I'll make a new reef video soon. I'll show you guys the reef um, here in a couple of days because it's, it has also been some time since I've made a reef video. You know, I've really focused on the freshwater planet tank, and you guys really seem to enjoy that, so I'm very happy to see that. Um, of course, there are going to be more planet tank episodes, but I really want to make sure that you guys also um, stay focused with the African cichlids and, you know, my pride and joy, the reef tank. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and. See you guys in another video.